How are you holding up, Tracy? Did you receive the package I sent you? Yes, I did. I got it this morning. Thank you for the fresh fruits you sent us. It was very kind of you to send us gifts. Don't thank me, Tracy. I didn't send them for you. I sent them only for Lucas. They are his fruits and his alone. You are not allowed to touch any of them. Okay, I get it. Make sure he savors them. I handpicked them for him, so let me know if he enjoyed them. I only sent enough for him to eat anyway. There is nothing left for you. Okay. I'll tell him they are from you and make sure he gets the package. As long as you know your place in this family, you never know when you could be gone from his life. <laughs> I don't plan to leave him anytime soon, so you don't need to worry about things like that. But you're only in your third year of marriage already, aren't you? That's not that long in a relationship. Anything could change, right? You never know what fate has in store for you. Relationships can crumble in an instant. I understand what you are saying, but our relationship is rock solid, so I don't think that will be happening. I don't think there is any chance of us breaking up in the near future. I saw that your cousin Emma was already pregnant during my brother's surprise birthday party. They were only married a year up to that point when she got pregnant. What is taking you guys so long? Is there a problem why you guys still haven't decided to have kids yet? Isn't it time you start thinking about that? We're waiting for the right time for both of us. Right now, we just want to enjoy our time being married. We are still planning to have children in the future, so you shouldn't be worried. Don't you think you're a bit old to be waiting? Shouldn't you be trying to have kids right away? At this rate, you'll run out of time to have kids and start a family. Are you sure you're okay with taking that risk? We have everything under control, so I don't think you should say things like that. Why? I'm just concerned about you, that's all. I've got a lot of experience, so I'm just giving you some useful advice. Okay, but just know that we are thinking about things as well. We weren't born yesterday. By the way, can I ask you a favor? Speaking about your brother's birthday party, next time something that big is going on, could you let us know in advance next time? It would really help us out if you could do that for us. Why do you bring that up? You surprised us with how suddenly you told us about it. We didn't have much time to prepare, let alone get a gift. Well, Lucas was able to make it, wasn't he? You were the one who was saying you didn't know if you could make it. Why did you make it sound so hard to be able to come? He happened to be off work that day, but I wasn't planning to take that day off. I don't think it's reasonable to have difficulties since it was at 2 p.m. on a Wednesday and you let us know the night before. You couldn't take off one day of work. It shouldn't be that hard to do, especially for a 60th birthday of all things. You aren't that dedicated anyway, so I don't think your work would even miss you being gone. It's hard when we don't know in advance. You didn't give us enough time to prepare. I had to promise to do overtime to leave early that day. From now on, we need to know in advance that we can make plans. It's not easy to quickly get a day off from work. Why did you tell us so late in the first place? I would have expected that you would have told us weeks ago if you had known about it. I just forgot to tell you. There was a lot going on at the time and I was busy getting everything ready for the party. Don't act like I was trying to hide it from you. It was just a stressful time for me and I didn't have a lot of time to think about things. You're not even a member of the family, so why do you care so much about it anyway? It wouldn't make a difference if you came or not. <laughs> I know I didn't really know him that well, but... Then don't complain about it. Especially since your presence didn't make a difference at the party. I didn't see anyone talk to you. Keep in mind from now on that you can't always just be thinking about yourself in these situations. You have to consider the people around you and make sure you aren't being a bother to them. Don't you think you can just show up whenever you like because you married Lucas? You could be out of the picture before you know it. Hey, Tracy. Can you do me a favor and tell Lucas to keep the first of next month free? There's something important happening, and I need him to be there for it. Sure, I can do that for you. You're talking about his nephew's piano recital, right? 
I already know about it, so I'm pretty sure he has it on his calendar. You know about it? How did you find out? Yeah, I heard it from Danielle. She told me about the dinner that she's hosting afterwards as well. She was so sweet to invite me too, so I'm really excited for it. She invited you too? Yep. She said that she would love to have me there, and that she can't wait to chat with me more while I'm there. I see. I didn't know she was handing out invitations to just anyone. I was hoping it would be a family-only event. You're not coming though, right? You know, that would make things awkward for us. What do you mean? I wanted only family members to be invited to the recital. It wouldn't feel right if someone like you came along. It would ruin the vibe I wanted the recital to have. So please don't come. But Danielle married into the family just like I did. I don't see the difference. But I already told her I was going to be there. I can't just back out now. How would I explain to her that I changed my mind? Just tell her that you're sick. It's not that hard to make up an excuse. Well, maybe it is hard for someone like you. But I'm sure you can manage something. Sorry, I can't do that. Not after she personally invited me. She's expecting me to be there, and I don't want to disappoint her. If she hadn't invited me, I would be fine with that. But I'm not going to go back on my word. I don't feel right lying to her about not being able to go when she really wants me there. I want to support her and the rest of the family. Oh, really? You're okay with spoiling the mood of the event. You don't want to lie to help us out, but you're okay with messing up an event that took a lot of planning to make? I'm not trying to do that. I'm just trying to be supportive and respectful. And even if you don't consider me as family, isn't your daughter-in-law not related by blood either? She's the wife of your son, after all. Are you okay with her being there? Why are you okay with her attending the concert, but not with me joining as well? She gets a pass. She gave me a grandchild, so I don't have any issues with her going. She's also been in this family longer than you have, and has proven herself to be worthy of attending events like these. I do wish she would stop inviting people without my consent, though. I'll have to talk to her about that later. But even if she isn't perfect, she is still contributing more to the family than you are, after all. She earned my respect after she had her child. Are you saying that you won't accept me until I have a child? You have to earn your place in this family. If you want that, maybe you should let me live with you and your husband. I've been thinking about asking you this for a while now. What? You're saying that you want to move in with us and share our home? Well, I hate to admit it. I'm getting older these days, and I might need some assistance. I bet living together would help me warm up to you faster, if that's what you really want. Especially since you have competition with your other relatives for my approval. I've already mentioned this idea to Lucas, so if you want a better chance at being accepted, you'd better act fast before I move in with him instead. You've brought this up before, but we both are happy with the way things are. We're willing to support you in any other ways we can, if you can think of anything else. But we would rather live separately from you for now. So what you're saying is that you reject me? You don't want me to move in with you? Is that what you were telling me right now? I'm sorry, but for now, me and Lucas would prefer it if we could just live together and not have someone else move in. I knew you'd say something like that. This is why you're not part of this family. You won't even listen to any of my suggestions that I give you. How do you expect to become part of this family when you don't even try to listen and help out your other family members? We said we were willing to support you in other ways. Then can you help me with something else? My backyard needs some work done, and I need some extra hands. I'm sure you can handle a simple task like that, right? I'm sure you can do something like this. You did say you were willing to help me in other ways. So are you going to finally help me out or what? If it's something like that, I'm sure we can help with that. When do you need us to help? Then how about you come over this Saturday? Does some time in the afternoon work for you? I doubt we'll be able to finish everything, even if we worked all day. We'll just have to work at it little by little until everything is done. It will probably take some time, but I'm sure we can figure it out if we work together. 
I have plenty of ideas that we could work on to really transform the whole area. So Sunday afternoon then. Got it. We'll see you then. I'll let Lucas know the time as well, and we'll both be there. Then I'll see you next week. Oh, but I don't want you to bother Lucas with this. I want you to come alone and work with me. How well you do here could change our relationship, you know? I'm looking forward to spending time working with you on this project. I'm sure we'll do a great job together. Tracy, I need you to come over right now. Something terrible has happened, and I need your help urgently. What's wrong? I thought we agreed to start in the afternoon. I'm picking up a package for my mother right now, so I'm not at home at the moment. What's going on that needs me to be there right away? Did something serious happen? I can head over as soon as I'm done with this, so just hang on and I'll be there in a little while. You can't do that later! I need you here as soon as possible! It's not going to take that long. Can you just wait until I'm done here? It really won't take much time, so if you could be patient, I can be there in no time. This is an emergency, so I need you here right now. I've fallen and I can't get up! I think I've broken my leg and I need to go to the hospital. What happened? Where are you right now? Where do you think I am? I'm in my backyard! I'm in agony and I can't move my leg at all. I've tried calling Lucas, but he won't answer his phone. Where is he when I need him? Where would he be this early in the morning? He went to the movies this morning, so he must have turned off his phone before the movie started. That's why he hasn't been answering your calls and messages. Then you're my only hope. Get over here right away and help me! My leg is throbbing, and I can't even touch it without screaming. I need to get to the hospital as soon as possible, so I need you to drive me there when you get here. Shouldn't you call an ambulance then? Even if I left now, it'd take me 30 minutes to get there. And if it's that serious of an injury, you need to get medical attention as soon as possible. How about I call an ambulance for you? That would be the fastest way to get you there. No, no, no! I can't do that. I'm covered in dirt from falling into a hole, and I look horrible right now. I can't let anyone see me like this. The whole neighborhood would laugh at me. I'd never hear the end of it. Everyone will gossip about it for years. Wait, you're in a hole? What hole are you talking about? My clothes are filthy, and I need a change of clothes before I go to the hospital. That's why I'm calling you and not an ambulance. I need someone to help me clean up before I go. Are you really at home right now? How did you get injured in your backyard? It's so plain and simple. And you said you were covered in dirt? But your yard doesn't have any mud pits in it, does it? If it had rained, then maybe I could see how you slipped and hurt yourself in your backyard. But it hasn't rained in days. So what kind of holes are there in your backyard that are always that muddy? Just stop asking questions and come over. If you don't, I'll never speak to you again. This isn't the time to be curious about the details. I need to get to the hospital. I'm suffering here, and I need someone to rescue me. So just hurry up. Can you do that one simple thing for me? Fine, fine. I'm on my way. I'll let you know when I'm almost there. And I'm calling an ambulance, too. Finally? You're such a pain, you know that? That's why you're not part of this family. You never care when I really need you. A real family member would always sense when their family is in trouble and wouldn't hesitate to help. Quit stalling and get over here. Hey, Tracy. Can you do me a favor? Can you bring over a few of my things to the hospital? I feel a bit of unease being at the hospital alone all day, and I want to have a few of my things here while I'm staying here. So if you could bring over some of my things, that would be a great help to me. Huh? I know this might be a bit of a surprise to you, but ever since I've been hospitalized, no one's come to visit. It's like I've become a ghost, and that everyone has forgotten that I exist. I don't know why everyone is acting so strangely after I've been hospitalized. My sons won't even respond to my messages. So here is the only one I can rely on right now. So if you could help me out, I'd really appreciate it. I need someone I know that I can depend on right now. 
Just who are you? What are you talking about? It's your mother-in-law, Finley. I'm sorry, but my husband doesn't have a mother anymore. Not after what happened a few days ago. What are you saying? I don't understand what you're talking about. You were the one who saved me after I fell into that hole. You even called me an ambulance and helped me out. I'm glad I was able to count on you when I fell down. And even though I've been injured this badly and have to stay at the hospital, no one has come to visit ever since I've arrived. And I don't know why everyone has been so cold to me recently. It doesn't make any sense. So please don't say things like that, and please lend me a hand here. Of course no one would visit you. It's what you deserve, isn't it? What do you mean? What did I do? After you tried to make me fall into a hole you set up, only for you to fall into it yourself. You didn't think I'd be angry after figuring out what you were planning to do? You only got injured because of what you did, right? You wouldn't be in this situation if you weren't trying to pull something. That might be true, but it's not what it looks like. What were you thinking? Inviting me over only to try to hurt me? What kind of messed up plan was that? I was just messing around. I wasn't planning on something like this happening. Yet you still got injured from your own trap. So much that you'll have to stay at the hospital for a long time. With how badly you were injured, this isn't something that I'm going to take lightly. I'm horrified that you tried to hurt me like this. What normal person would try to hurt their own daughter-in-law is a joke. You're still young. You wouldn't have been that bad off for someone as young as you are. How do we know that? Do you have any proof of that? What would you have done if I was as injured as you are? Would you have called me an ambulance? Look, I'm sorry. I didn't think something like this would happen. I never expected that I would have been so injured from trying to do something like this. I bet. But I promise that I'll treat you better from now on. I've learned my lesson after what happened to me. So please, just help me while I'm still hospitalized. I need all the help I can get right now. Not a chance I'm helping you after what's happened. Lucas told me he's done talking with you from now on as well. So don't plan on asking him to help you out either. He said that? You have a problem with that? Why would he do that? I know what I did was wrong, but I was the one who got injured from it. Why would he go as far as to not talk to his own mother anymore? He wasn't affected by anything that happened. You think that makes things better? You still tried to hurt the person who wanted to help you. You don't have to forgive me for what happened. But for him to refuse to talk to his own mother... Isn't that going too far? I'm his mother after all. Why would he go as far as never speaking to me again? He was planning to, even if you didn't fall into that hole. But why? Don't you recall everything you did up to this point? I know I haven't always treated you the best, but it wasn't easy for me either. I've had my own concerns that I've had to take care of as well with our relationship. And you were always complaining about not being considered part of the family when you don't even have a child yet. You needed to know your place in the family. And what exactly is my place? Not showing up to funerals and being treated like an outsider? In what world is that kind of treatment okay? Did you even plan to ever treat me like a normal family member? I told you I'll be better from now on. That's good enough, right? That's what you've been asking for, right? I'm sorry about what I've done. I'm aware that I didn't treat you the way I should have. So can we go back to having a good relationship and bury the hatchet? It's too late for apologies. Lucas and I are done dealing with you. Don't expect to be hearing from us from now on. But what will happen to me? You're really saying you won't ever see me again? That's right. Outside of weddings and funerals, you won't be seeing us anymore. We've had enough of dealing with you and the problems you bring. You're saying you're fine not being in the will? I'm not giving you a thing if you do this. Don't you want to be included in the will? I bet Lucas was expecting to receive a good portion of what I was planning to give away. I'll give everything to my older son and leave you out of the will entirely. We don't mind, but didn't he also cut ties with you recently? Why would you give something to him in the will if he also isn't talking to you anymore either? What are you talking about? 
what did I ever do to him? You might not remember, but you used to treat his wife as badly as you treated me. You treated her exactly the same way as you treated me before I showed up. But I'm treating her right nowadays. And I didn't mean to treat her badly either. And she didn't seem to mind what I was doing either. If she had a problem with what I was doing to her, why wouldn't she have said anything to me? She was just being nice since you're her husband's mom. She was never fine with what you did to her. I'm amazed with how much you don't realize how badly you've treated those around you. That's crazy. After inviting her to events and even taking care of her child, she thinks that about me. How could she be so cruel after everything I've done to help her so far? She hasn't forgotten what you did to her. Just because you started toying with me doesn't mean she's forgiven you. You can't just get away with harassing those around you. Are you saying that this is why no one is visiting me? That's right. So don't expect us to help you out from now on. After this conversation, we are done talking. Tracy, please. I'm truly sorry. I need you to understand my point of view. I couldn't go on with something like this happening to me. I can't live without seeing my sons. And I need someone to help me while I'm in the hospital. All I tried to do was just pull a little prank. I didn't do anything that deserves this kind of treatment. You've done plenty. You treated the people around you like trash and never tried to change for the better. You only saw the people around you as pawns in your game. After everything, this is what you deserve. Please don't say that. I'll be better than I was before. I'll make sure to treat the people around me better and make sure to be a kinder person. I'll treat you like a family member you always wanted me to. Isn't that what you always wanted? So don't just abandon me like this. Sorry, but I'm just an outsider. I'm not part of the family. Maybe you should ask someone who is part of the family for help. Ever since then, Finley has apologized to me many times, but none of us or my husband's siblings have forgiven her for her actions. She had to turn to some distant relatives for the help she needed, and they took pity on her for a while. But when we told them the truth about her behavior, they all turned their backs on her and left her alone in the hospital. She now lives a lonely and miserable life with no one to support her. She has lost so many people in her life because of what she did, and I think she finally realizes how hurtful she was to others. You can't treat people like garbage and expect them to be okay with it. I will never forgive her. And sooner or later, she will have to go to a facility since no one is willing to take care of her. But for now, we're happy to let her suffer the consequences of her actions. About six months after the incident, I got pregnant and I'm loving every moment of it. It's not easy to deal with the challenges of pregnancy, like morning sickness. But without my mother-in-law in the picture, my life is much more peaceful. It would have been a nightmare if things had continued the way they were. If I hadn't stood up for myself, I could be stuck with her for years to come. I'm glad I was able to sort things out when I did. Even though it was hard, while it's natural to want your mother-in-law's approval, you can't let them abuse you in order to please them. I learned that sometimes you have to put yourself first and do what's best for you and your family. I plan to enjoy my life with the people who truly love me.